Shalom to the elect of Israel, to the whole elect of Israel, you Hebrews of likes, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians. Gotta give all praises on and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. The most high the heavenly father, his Hebrew name is Yahweh. Not Yahweh, not Jehovah, not God, not Elohim, not Mosai, not Lord, not Yah, not Jah, not Ahaya, not Allah, it's Yahweh. And his only begotten son name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. Not Yahshua, not Yeshua, not Jesus Christos, not Jesus Christ, not Serapos Christos, not Yeshua, not Yehoshua. It's Yahweh Shah. So we gotta give all praises on and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rekha Kwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders, bishops and elders of great millstone, who well, who teach well. Who are the apostles and elders of all of Israel, ready to accept it or not? And a sincere salutation to all the often pushing the truth and believing the truth throughout the four winds of the earth, the entire world, waking up the whole for the But shallow one to the Agwath who are listening learning, you few sisters who are listening and learning. I'm Isaiah from Jim Master Lando Camp, coming at you another lesson in truth, facts, faith, and education. Another day, education, Lord Willis be edifying. So I'm gonna tell you this lesson. This is how we know. This is how we know that you are not the people of the Lord in the land of Israel. Lord was be able to find. This is copyright disclaimer on the section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. You see it. Check this out. This is from August the 6th. Tensions are mounting again between Israel and Palestine, and the exchange of air raids and rocket attacks has entered its second day. An Israeli aircraft struck in Gaza, and Palestinians fired rockets at Israel after an Israeli operation against the Islamic Jihad militant group ended more than a year of relative calm along the border. Israel says it struck Palestinian Islamic Jihad group which was preparing to launch rockets. Additional bombings targeted three houses, flattening at least one as the sounds of more explosions rocked Gaza City. In response to this, the Islamic Jihad militants fired at least 160 rockets across the border, setting off air raid sirens and sending people running to bomb shelters as far as the central Israeli city of Mordin between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. Most of these missiles were intercepted and there were no reports of serious casualties. Israel's military warned that deadly airstrikes against the militants in Gaza could last a week. Israel has deployed troops and artillery close to its border with Gaza and has also stopped the planned transport of fuel into Gaza shortly before the Friday strike, clipping the territory's lone power plant and reducing electricity to around eight hours per day. In West Bank, the Israeli military apprehended Islamic Jihad activists in several locations. Now, according to the army, around 20 suspects were arrested. The Israeli army said in a statement that troops' activity against the Islamic Jihad terrorist organization are continuing. And now, in a sign that the conflict could expand, the head of Iran's Revolutionary Guards said, and I quote, that the Palestinians are not on are not alone in their fight against Israel and will work to uphold the rights of the Palestinian people." End of quote. 
where Hamas appears to stay on the sidelines of the conflict for now. Israel and Hamas have fought four wars and several smaller battles over the last 15 years. Every conflict between Israel and Gaza leaves one thing in common, and that is the sight of people burying their loved ones and living in complete despair, looking for a permanent solution to this decades-long conflict. Russia has called for maximum restraint in the Gaza Strip. Britain, too, is urging for a swift end to the violence while saying that the United Kingdom stands by Israel and its right to defend itself. Joining us live now from Tel Aviv is Mir Javed Anfar. He is Middle East analyst and co-author of the Nuclear Sphinx of Tehran. Welcome to me on, Mir. Thank you. Hello there. What really sparked this fresh round of tensions? It, it looks like that Israel had prior intelligence that Islamic Jihad was about to embark on a, on a number of attacks. Um, there was some... <coughs> Sorry, there were some indications that Islamic Jihad uh, had, had the terrorist infrastructure in West Bank. Then there was a very big concern that the head of Islamic Jihad went to Tehran. We have to remember that unlike Hamas, Islamic Jihad almost 100% depends on the Islamic Republic of Iran for its not just funds, but also political relationship. Hamas also has good relations with Iran, but it's not... Um, it doesn't receive orders like from Tehran as, as Islamic Jihad does. So there seems to be that there was con there was reports that Islamic Jihad was um, uh, with, with the, by the orders of Iran was about to launch on a, a, a campaign against Israel. So Israel took the initiative and started attacking uh, Islamic Jihad targets in Gaza and also arrested a number of Islamic Jihad people in the West Bank. Javed Anfar, let me ask you this. In your own view, do you see the situation escalating from here on? Difficult to know. Um, to be honest with you, as long as Hamas doesn't get involved, um, I don't think it's going to get worse. Um, look, at the, the situation is that you have to remember that Hamas and Islam Jihad, they live together in the same area, but... Right now, it's not in the interest of Hamas for the situation to get out of hand. So uh, Israel will have to be careful about what kind of attacks it carries on. It will have to be careful about the, the civilian casualties. And if the civilian casualties are kept relatively low and Israel doesn't strike Hamas targets, um, I, think, uh, I don't think the situation is going to escalate because I don't think Hamas is too happy with the way that Islamic Jihad has, has challenged Hamas's uh, ambitions to keep some kind of stability in Gaza. Finally, Mir, before I let you go, how potent is the Palestinian Islamic Jihad? And how do you see the statement of the Iran's revolutionary guards who have vowed to stand by Palestinians? A Palest Look, PLO and Hamas are the two biggest um, two biggest Palestinian organizations, political organizations, Israel must try to find, uh, must try to improve relations with the PLO because they have recognized Israel uh, and they we have security cooperation with them. We can't do anything with Hamas. Hamas doesn't recognize our right to exist. Ha Islamic Jihad is the third biggest organization. It's a militant organization that calls for the elimination of Israel. It's much more militant than Hamas. Unlike Hamas, Islamic Jihad has not participated in elections, in, 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 in Palestinian elections, um, because it seems that the Iranian bosses don't want it to, to, to stand in the ballot box because they might be defeated. And it's very concerning that Iran is openly saying that they're behind this. But at the same time, it's not very surprising because Iran and Israel have been involved in a war from 1982 when Iran started uh, supporting the Hezbollah movement in Lebanon. Mir, finally, um, I, I did say that I'll let you go, but uh, this is my final question to you. The Israeli army says that Ask its military offensive, <laughs> the military offensive in the Gaza Strip may extend over a week. What will be the possible repercussion of these actions by the forces? That's another very good question. Um, to be honest, uh, I think... 
Look, you can't eliminate how Islamic Jihad completely. I think what the message Israel wants to send to Iran via Islamic Jihad is that Israel will not allow Islam, Iran to use Islamic Jihad to threaten its security. And I think the goal will be to strike uh, as, uh, as hard a blow as possible to Islamic Jihad's uh, military infrastructure and its personnel so that their, their capabilities are set back. And also Iran recognizes that for, for the time being, uh, Israel will not allow Islamic Jihad to be used in order to, uh, to undermine Israel's security. But that doesn't mean Iran is going to stop. Iran has another proxy called Hezbollah in Lebanon. We see them threatening the gas fields inside Israeli territory, the Karish gas fields. And then, you know, once this conflict in Gaza calms down, we may face a new crisis up north with Iran's other proxy, Hezbollah. Mir Javed Anfar is a co-author of The Nuclear Sphinx of Tehran and also a Middle East analyst. Thank you very much for making time and for talking to me on today. This is uh, Psalm 79 and 1. It reads, O power, the heathen are coming to thine inheritance. Thy holy temple have they defiled. They have laid Jerusalem on heaps. And what we see is going on over there in the land of Israel is they landing on heaps, man. This is Isaiah chapter 1, verse 7. It reads, Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. What are these devils doing? Let me get this here. They destroying it, man. Okay? Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land strangers devour it in your in your presence, and it is desolate, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. Now in Isaiah 2 and 1, this is how we know these are not the people of the Lord, man, in that land. This is Isaiah 2 and 1. The word of Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established. Which is, which is his son's his son's kingdom. The mountain is the Lord establishing his son's kingdom on earth. They say, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house should be established in the top of the mountain over all the other governments and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob, and he would teach us all, all his he would, and he would teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law in the word of Yahweh, have a shot from Jerusalem, and he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords in the plowshares, and their spears in the pruning hooks. Now we read in Joel 3. Let's read that real quick. Because it talks about, about these nations beating their plowshares in the swords and their pruning hooks and the spears. This is Joel 3 and 9 to read. Proclaim, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares in the swords and your pruning hooks in the spears. Let the weak say I'm strong. So right here in Isaiah 2 and 1. It's telling them to reverse. The Lord is saying reverse that and beat your spears and swords in the plowshares and pruning hooks, meaning tools that are used for agriculture, right? So the Lord said instead of right now, he's saying instead of worrying about producing food for your country, get your military arsenal together, right? So in Isaiah 2, Isaiah 2 and 4 reads, and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords in the plowshares. Remember in Joel 3, it said, beat your plowshares in the swords. It say, and they shall beat their swords in the plowshares and their spears in the pruning hooks. Right? So it's going to go back reverse because there ain't going to be no weapons. When the kingdom of heaven is established, the point is, this is how we know these are not the people of the Lord in the land of Israel. 
Cause the Lord said, when the when the when the kingdom of heaven is established on earth, there will be no more war, no more no more wars. There will be no more weapons of war. So it say, they shall beat their swords in the plowshares and their pruning hooks in the spears. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of Yahweh Shema Basha. So it's showing you right here, ain't gonna be no more wars. So let me get it here and Michael. Chapter 4 say the same difference. This is Michael 4 and 1. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of Yahweh Shemoah shall be established in the top of the mountains. So the Lord's, the Lord's kingdom is going to be established over all other kingdoms. Ain't going to be no other kingdom. It's only going to be the, the kingdom of Israel. It reads, And it shall be exalted above the hills, and the people shall flow unto it. Now the other 16 heathen nations are going to be to go back. They are, they are going to be able to go back into their lands. Right, but the rulership, the kingdom is going to be the Lord's. It say, and many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the power of Jacob. He will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth out of Zion, and the word of Yahweh Shema was shot from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among many people, same thing as in Isaiah 2, and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords in the plowshares and their pruning hooks in the spears. So ain't gonna be no more missiles. It's gonna go back to farming, producing crops. It say, nation shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of Yahweh of hosts have spoken it. So, when you read in Ezekiel 39, it reads this, Ezekiel 39 and 7. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. And the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel. But it shall come, but it say, behold, it shall come. It is come and it is done, saith Yahweh Shema Shah power. This is the day whereof I have spoken. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows, and the handstays and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years, which is a completion, so that they should take no wood out of the field neither cut down any of the forest for they shall burn the weapons with fire and they shall spoil those that spoil them and rob those that rob them saith the lord yahweh shema Bashar. so when yahweh shah's kingdom is established ain't gonna be no more weapons of war man and this is how we know this is not the people in the land of israel man the lord said this in ezekiel 37 this is ezekiel chapter 37 In verse 21 it reads, And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord power, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, and I will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all. Where is the king in the land of Israel? He's not there. And they shall be no more two nations, the southern and northern kingdom. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places, wherein they have sinned, and will cleanse them, so shall they be my people, and I will be their God. And David my servant shall be king over them. Is King David in the land of Israel right now? I think not. And David, and David my servant shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall all they shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. You see, King David is gonna be in the land, man. It's gonna be Yahushua, King David, the hundred and forty-four thousand elect, and all of Israel, man. This ain't going on in the land right now, man. That's why Isaiah said this. This is Isaiah 63. 
and 17 and reads, O Yahweh, why has thou made us to err from thy ways and harden our heart from thy fear? Return for thy servants' sake the tribes of thy inheritance. We know who the servants is. Leviticus 25 and 55. The Lord said, Israel is my servants, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. It's verse 18. The people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. Possess what? The land of Israel. We only had it for a little while. King David had it for a 40 and another 30, which was 70. And then Solomon had it for 40 years. 40 years of peace with Solomon, which represented, it was the beginning representation of Yahweh shot rooting the earth in righteousness and peace forever. But we only had it for a little while. To say, the people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. We are thine. Thy never bearers rule over them. They were not called by thy name. So we only had the land of Israel for a little while, man. So if this is supposed to be the kingdom of heaven right now, and these people in the land are supposed to be the people of the Lord, why is there a war going on? The scriptures say there will be no more war. And they say when the, when the kingdom of heaven is established, that the weapons will be burnt for seven years, man. So this is how we know this is not the people of the Lord. And I got this other clip here. Check this out. Me and the brother talk about this all the time, man. About um when the pills be gone, reality going to set in, man. When there is no marijuana and pills to pop and lean and, and, uh, and um liquor, reality going to set in, man. Check this out. Now, an article just came through on Smart News app and said, Can the U.S. military fight Russia and China at the same time? I think not. And this is what's going to happen. Can the U.S. military fight Russia and China at the same time? And Iran going to join too, man. And no, they can't fight Russia and China at the same time. Two powerhouses? I think not. Geopolitical strategists are already alerting that if tensions between the U.S. and China continue to rise, the standard of living of millions upon millions of Americans will be seriously impacted as the overwhelming majority of products we consume every day that come from the Eastern economic superpower would quickly disappear from U.S. store shelves. At the same time, the confrontation between the Chinese government and Taiwan means that the production of critical components such as semiconductors and microchips would dramatically collapse. Today, Taiwan is the biggest producer of microchips in the entire world. And if this production stops, the whole US economy would come to a crashing halt. Mm. The stakes are incredibly high. And yet, no one seems to be paying attention to these emerging threats. That's why, in today's video, we're going to expose the risks and consequences of this looming geopolitical battle between the two greatest economic potencies of the globe. Before moving on, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our future videos. Last week, when rumors that the House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi would visit Taiwan started to spread, Chinese authorities issued an ominous warning. We would like to tell the U.S. once again that China is standing by, and the Chinese People's Liberation Army will never sit idly by. China will take resolute responses and strong countermeasures to defend its sovereignty and territorial integrity. Foreign Minister Spokesman Zhao Lijian told reporters when asked about the fallout from Pelosi leading a congressional delegation to Taipei. As for what measures, if she dares to go, then let's wait and see. Zhao added. Oh, the U.S. government was aware that her visit to Taiwan would absolutely enrage the Chinese. But they sent her and her delegation anyway. They were received by Taiwan's foreign minister, Joseph Wu, and Sandra Utkirk, the top U.S. representative in Taiwan. But the visitors pushed U.S.-Chinese relations to a new low. Pelosi's arrival 
triggered a furious response from China at a time when international tensions already are elevated by Russia's aggression toward Ukraine. China considers Taiwan part of its territory, and Chinese authorities have never been afraid of using force to bring it under their control. The U.S. government warned China against using the visit as an excuse for ordering unnecessary military action against Taiwan. But China's foreign mi- and The name of this clip, this video is A Matter of Life and Death. Americans will be without medicine once trade with China stops. Now, this is an infomercial, so bear with me. Salaki. Ministry said that Pelosi's visit. The perfect road trip exists, and it's at your fingertips with the Wyndham Road Trip Planner. Seriously damaged peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait, and has a severe impact on the political foundation of China-U.S. relations, seriously infringing China's sovereignty and territorial integrity. The Chinese government promptly warned that there would be a military response, and now the entire globe is anxious to see what that will be. Not taking action would look like a big victory for Nancy Pelosi and the United States, but in real terms, there is no way that Xi Jinping is going to let this go and forget about it. So the next developments could change everything. The latest reports reveal that Chinese forces are already gathering near the coast for a potential invasion. But there's still uncertainty over a full-blown aggression against Taiwan. Strategists argue that instead of launching an attack overnight, China is far more likely to overtake a couple of the small islands right off the Chinese coast that currently belong to Taiwan. And if that's the case, the Biden administration would feel compelled to respond very aggressively. Right now, both sides keep raising the stakes, which means that tensions could escalate into a full-blown conflict in the Pacific very rapidly. And once a geopolitical battle begins, our trading relationship with China would immediately come to a halt. Needless to say, the American population is not prepared for that. A clash of such immense proportions would hurt our economy very badly in countless ways. A very worrying consequence this conflict might bring is a widespread shortage of medicine. Over the past decade, our domestic production of medicine has steadily declined, and that's a serious problem. According to U.S. Representative Mike Gallagher, the vast majority of the medicine we use here in the United States comes from overseas. And China is the largest supplier. The Chinese government party has threatened to withhold life-saving drugs from the U.S. once, and we'd be crazy to think they won't attempt to do so again. He said in a recent statement, Congress needs an aggressive plan to protect our critical pharmaceutical supply chains and end our reliance on China. This is a national security imperative, and to many Americans, a matter of life and death. Gallagher emphasized, the United States must end our reliance on China for life-saving drugs and critical medical equipment. Added conference chair Elise Stefanik, we have become far too dependent on China's supply chain, and their malign regime represents too great a threat to our national security for us to be at their mercy. I am proud to sponsor this legislation to equip our domestic pharmaceutical and medical manufacturers to be able to efficiently produce. Look at this, pop on the screen. Babel, right? Babel. Practice French, practice German, practice Italian, practice Spanish. You see this? This will happen in Genesis, man. Okay? In the Tower of Babel, which Babel means confusion. The Lord confounded the languages, man. This is what these devils doing again. All this is about one world order, one world government. The same thing they did in Genesis, the same thing they did in the Greek, they tried to do in the Greek empire. The same thing, man. The same thing they trying to do now, man. You see, spiritual, man. These items here in the United States. Through this effort, Americans can have better peace of mind 
regarding who they rely on for their own personal health needs. She continued. On the same note, Republican Bill Posey noted that 80% of the drugs that Americans depend on come from overseas. China, whose pharmaceuticals have been subject to numerous recalls, is the largest manufacturer. As a result of this reliance, the U.S. has not produced basic medicines like in the case of penicillin since 2004. Health authorities in the U.S. are saying that if the conflict accelerates, our domestic supply of antibiotics will dry up incredibly fast. Right now, the U.S. has virtually no capacity to manufacture antibiotics. That's because China currently controls roughly 90% of the global supply of inputs needed to make the generic antibiotics that treat bronchitis, pneumonia, pediatric ear infections, and life-threatening conditions such as sepsis. They you see that? They control 90% of the supply to input of inputs needed to make the genetic antibiotics, man. And we be talking about this all the time. <laughs> we talk about this all the time, man. When there is no more drugs out here, you can't get no more Laura sets and Percocets sets and Dava sets. You can't get no none of the sets. You can't get no more weed and liquor, no kind of drugs. These it's gonna be pandemonium out here, man. We keep telling you this is finna take place, man. You think this is a coincidence? This is being this is a lesson? This is a video? No, man, this is real, man wrote in a note published by Bloomberg. Generic antibiotics such as azithromycin used to treat secondary bacterial infections are already in short supply, and the U.S. could experience a national shortage since the key materials for azithromycin and other medications are supplied by China. The Chinese government is fully aware that the U.S. is extremely vulnerable to antibiotic shortages. Mm. In fact, executives of the U.S. healthcare industry affirmed that Beijing orchestrated a long-term cartel strategy that successfully drove the production of antibiotics and thousands of other generic drugs out of the United States. As a result, China has become the main source of the key ingredients for both penicillin and another class of antibiotics, cephalosporins. Mm. Together, these drugs comprise two-thirds of the antibiotics used in the U.S. each day. The eastern superpower's domination of global drug inputs happened gradually. <laughs> Many industry leaders actually praised this trend, thinking that the outsourcing of America's medicine manufacturing capacity would simply yield cheaper prices. But that was a very naive strategy. Now that Beijing holds a virtual monopoly on medicine inputs, it can charge monopoly prices. Last year, it pushed the price of critical components for antibiotics and histaminophen by 100%. The truth is that we should have never allowed ourselves to become so dependent on one of our primary global rivals. Many experts have been telling the U.S. government to take action before a scenario like this occurred. But nothing was ever done. Rosemary Gibson, a senior advisor. See how the Lord set this up, man? You see how the Lord set this up? That Babylon the Great, most of the stuff that come to Babylon the Great is from other countries, man. Lucky, I want this. <laughs> Supply chain, cheap drugs. This is Revelations 18 and 20. Rejoice over her, thy heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for power have avenged you on her. Rejoice over her, thy heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for power, you how about Shema Bashah, have avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city, Babylon, be thrown down, North America, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of the harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpers shall be heard no more at all in her. There'll be no more music. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in her and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in her meaning work and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in her in thee and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee 
for thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. What sorceries? It say, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. This word sorcery here, let's look this up. It said that shall no more be found in her sorcery, right? It said by thy sorcery, thy word, it said by Salakia, it say Revelation 18 and 23, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. The voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. So this word sorcery here, these devils, North America, Babylon the Great, deceive the world with their sorcery, man. Pharmakia, it say the use or the ministering of drugs, poisoning, sorcery, magical arts, often found in connection with idolatry and fostered by it, the deception and seductions of idolatry. It say sorcery witchcraft. Strong definition, it say medication. Okay? Medication, man. North America, Babylon the Great, has everybody bugged out of popping pills, sipping lean, smoking marijuana, man. Okay? Everybody on some kind of drug, man. That's why you have an opioid crisis with these uh, Job 924s. Esau Edom has an opioid crisis, an opioid epidemic. They have a suicide rate. They are dying fast and they can be born, right? They're not reproducing. <clears throat> well, this is this is how Babylon the Great goes down. This is what it looked like, man. The Lord is destroying this place, man. So yeah, Lord wills edifying. Gotta give all praises and glory to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rikah Kwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elder bishops and elders of great millstone who well, who teach well, who are the apostles and elders of all Israel, ready to accept it or not. And the sense of say, taste and tell the ark and pushing this truth and believing this truth throughout the four winds of the earth, the entire world working up the whole for the elect. Shout out to the Abba who are listening learning. A few sisters who are listening learning. Lord was edifying to the next time I say Shalom. Wa Uba Uba. The Wa for tuning in. May you help us your mama shall continue to bless you in your houses. Stay prayed up. We know. This is how we know that those are not the people of the Lord in that land. Because the earth is being ran in wickedness, man. Okay? The earth is being ran in wickedness, man. This is how we know. This is how we know. These are not the people of the Lord that's in the land of Israel. Shalom.